The president wants to spy on 200 million Americans without a warrant. Has he read this document, which he was sworn to uphold? Now, I will not have you libel Abraham Lincoln. I don't understand the problem with registering guns. We register cars. Mark Levine brings you the news the government doesn't want you to know. Today, an explosive story about connections between white supremacists and Islamic terrorists. When there's a conflict between Scalia's conservative values and the Constitution of the United States, he throws away the Constitution. When we do have secret prisons, that is not what America is all about. Let's go to Mark in five, four, three, two. Good evening, America. Welcome to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. I well, uh, first I should probably introduce my guest, uh, Mike Lane. He's a Republican strategist. Uh, Mike, thank you for coming back here on the Inside Scoop. Always a pleasure, Mark. Thanks for having me. I've been watching the various coverage, and of course, uh, you know that now that Iowa caucuses are done and New Hampshire is done. Now that the, the 2012 Republican nomination is down to the last five, in fact, uh, John Huntsman just took his name out of the race uh, yesterday, I think it was. We're down to five. So you've got uh, Romney, the clear front runner, Ron Paul, who seems to be usually the second place person, along with Santorum, um, occasionally almost first, and uh, Gingrich always getting that fourth place, and then Rick Perry, uh, who seems to always come up in the rear. I think it's pretty easy to say that after South Carolina, Rick Perry will also come in fifth place, and he'll be out of the race, and then there will be four. Mike Lane may think there may only be two after that. But what I find most interesting, Mike, is not so much the who's up and who's down. I mean, you and I have both predicted for a long time that Romney was going to be the nominee. Mm -hmm. uh, as a Democrat, I can tell you that I, I hope it continues for quite a while to come, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but what I found most interesting were the attacks on Romney's time at Bain, because Romney is selling himself as he's the businessman. He's going to take America in a better direction. He's going to run this company like a business, like he ran business at Bain Capital. And you found that, uh, well, Rick Perry, I think, put it best. He said, this isn't venture capitalism, it's vulture capitalism. There were articles in the New York Times, articles by Reuters. Even I dug up an old article from the LA Times back in 2007 that suggests that while Romney has followed the law, he hasn't necessarily done things in the way that, well, I think Americans would approve of. And so it's fascinating. Newt Gingrich did a whole ad, a whole 30-minute piece called Whit Mid Romney Came to Town, and then he pulled it under pressure from other Republicans. But if Newt Gingrich and Rick Perry have this much criticism over Romney's business dealings, obviously we Democrats, we're going to have a good time in November. Well, Mark, you know, it's amazing what you'll do when you're behind and it's your last shot. Uh, I think everybody agrees. Uh, that there will be uh, some more drops after the South Carolina primary next week. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, it's the last chance, uh, last hurrah for uh, some of these guys. It depends on, on where the chips fall. Uh, but when you get desperate, you do and say desperate things, and that's what they're doing. Well, I want to examine these things because uh, obviously there's a lot of things that Mitt Romney's done in Bain. And I think there's something you're going to agree with me on that Bain needs to give a full disclosure. The thing that is most troubling to me is uh, you know, Reuters did an expose, New York Times did an expose, but each of these articles say we don't know everything that's going on. Bain won't tell us. And Mitt Romney is the only presidential candidate really in my political lifetime. I would think it goes back before my political lifetime, 20, 30, 40 years. I, it goes back probably till the 70s. I don't know how long it's been since you've had a presidential candidate who refuses to disclose his tax returns. Now, I think you're going to agree with me. That's a mistake. Romney will eventually disclose his tax returns. And he should do it as soon as possible. Well, I think he probably will. And I think that he'll do it simultaneously when President Obama discloses his school records that he has for four years now refused to disclose. So, uh, you know, let, let's see. By all accounts, let, uh, Barack Obama was a stellar student. Well, at, we, at haven't, Law we, School. He was we, editor we, of we haven't, Law we, we haven't seen the transcripts or the school records or any of his Harvard Law Review articles. And so when he discloses them, I'm sure Governor Romney will get around to disclosing whatever you're looking for. Um, I'm sure you know this, Mike, but the Harvard Law Review is a publication. Right. And, and there are publications out there. And anyone who wants old copies can no. find old copies. It, it, I don't think this it, is quite hidden information. You, you know, it, it is, Mark. Where, where he's the first uh, president not to disclose his transcripts in a long time. Uh, why? What, what's he hiding? What's going on? Uh, if we're going did to have George full George W. Disclosure, Bush disclose his school transcripts? He, he sure did. He, uh, C's he, and D's. He, he proudly came up to be a, a high C student, I believe. It was a high C a plus. A high C student. Yeah, I don't think, uh, Bill Clinton, I don't, I don't remember, uh, George Bush Sr., uh, I don't think these are issues. The problem with the tax returns is that this is a guy 
who is known, or at least accused by Rick Barry, to be a vulture capitalist. This is a guy worth, we don't really know, but uh, upwards, people say between 100 and $250 million. Mitt Romney's net worth, what he does with his money, where he got his money, these are legitimate issues for the campaign, are he's they not? A, he's been a very successful businessman. I think the, uh, the actual range for what his net worth might be uh, is somewhere between 85 million and maybe up to uh, 250. Uh, but as you know, for most public disclosure forms, they give you a range to check. I have this asset, it's worth between X and Y, and you check that. And so, you, you know, uh, there's, there's, no, there's no inherent right of the public uh, to peer inside the bank account of uh, everybody who runs for public office. That's not the way we do things. Really? Because I would think the President of the United States who's running on a platform of saying he's going to do to this country what he did to business, should let the American people know what he did for business. But if he wants to go into November and say, you know what, what I did in Bain is off record, even though I'm going to do exactly to the no. country what I did to all the no. corporations I sliced no. and diced, you can't know about them, you can't discuss my record, I think he would go down in flames. No, no, so Bain, you can keep Bain, that, Bain, uh, Bain is not off the record. Um, Bain is a fair, fair thing for either uh, Rick Perry or Barack Obama to bring up during the campaign. Interestingly, since the attacks on Mitt Romney have intensified and focused on Bain, his poll numbers have gone up. So I, I don't think it's going to be a very successful thing for Obama to bring up in the fall. But, you know, I guess he's got nothing else to talk about. He doesn't have a record to stand on. I don't know that his poll numbers have gone up because of the attacks in Bain. They've gone they, simultaneously they, with the attacks on like, Bain. Gingrich's you know? numbers have gone up. Santorum's numbers have gone up. All their numbers have gone up as candidates drop out. I mean, Huntsman's numbers went down. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the few people that Huntsman, one of the many people, I should say, that Huntsman was behind was Stephen Colbert. Now, Stephen Colbert, of course, is the comedian. He's not even running. He jokes about running for president of the United States of South Carolina, mm -hmm. which may have been true in 1861. I don't, I don't think there really is a separate country these days called South, South Carolina. But uh, Colbert has a super PAC, mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually not his anymore. He, he pawned it off on Jon Stewart. But the Colbert Super PAC, I thought, uh, has done some, an amazing job. Now, Colbert, of course, like the Republicans, like the Supreme Court, he pretends or he says that uh, corporations are people because, after all, that's the heart of the Citizens United case, that corporations are people and therefore they have the right to spend unlimited funds on anything they want. So Colbert has a Super PAC and it's spending funds. Uh, I have not seen the ad. I've heard about the ad. I haven't seen the ad. Let's watch together. Uh, the, the Stephen Colbert ad on Mitt Romney and what he did at Bain Capital. I look forward to it. He's a very funny guy. Corporations, America's greatest institution. They built this country one job at a time. Mitt Romney says he's for corporations. Corporations are people, my friend. But Mitt Romney as a secret. As head of Bain Capital, he bought companies, carved them up, and got rid of what he couldn't use. If Mitt Romney really believes... Corporations are people, my friend. Then Mitt Romney is a serial killer. He's Mitt the Ripper. If you believe corporations are people, do your duty and protect them. On Saturday, January 21st, stop Mitt the Ripper before he kills again. Americans for a better tomorrow tomorrow are responsible for the content of this advertising. Okay, so uh, I thought that was pretty good. But the heart of the ad, uh, the heart of the ad is he's got some reality there. He showed real companies, KB Toys, Dade Bearing, uh, I didn't see the, uh, the, the GES uh, steel plant, but there are a whole bunch of businesses that Mitt has sliced and diced, uh, corporations that he's broken up. And here's the pattern that I see, Mike, and we'll, we'll deal with the companies one by one because I want to give the individual facts of each one. But it seems to me that I, there's an overall theme here. He takes a company, he loads it with tons and tons of debt, he then grabs a whole bunch of money out of the company for himself and for Bain and for the investors. Uh, I would argue that's looting the company. Grabs all the money until the company can't function anymore, forcing the company into bankruptcy. Then in bankruptcy, they can do things like break contracts, break pensions, destroy unions, destroy workers, uh, fire a whole bunch of people. And then after bankruptcy, sometimes the company sold for scrap, sometimes it's sold for a foreign company. At the end of the day, you have a goring concern that used to work. At the end of the day, you have something that doesn't work or the workers are mistreated, but Bain seems to do really well. 
Mitt Romney making his money by what he himself called destructive capitalism may be perfectly legal, but I think in this election when voters are so concerned about jobs, the fact that Mitt Romney is so often a job killer that's going to be an issue. It's going to hurt him. Well, Mark, you know, the commercial is very clever and, and very cynical, and that's what you'd expect from a professional comedian like Steve Colbert. I mean, he, that, that's what he does. Uh, he, 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 he exaggerates and he, uh, you know, makes... Um, uh, uh, yeah, the, the word, you know, no, 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 he, he, you know, he, 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 he makes jokes out of the whole thing. The, the interesting thing on this is most ideas and themes wait until at least the second or third or fourth season to jump the shark. He apparently has jumped the shark with his first effort, so it's, it's uh, but addre amusing. Address the specifics, and if you want, we can go through the Reuters article, the New York Times article on each of these companies. But the specific charge is what he does is he takes a corporation, loads it with debt, loots the company, takes the money for shareholders and for banks ends up doing very well for himself. Meanwhile, he leaves behind a company in tatters and thousands of people lose their jobs. Mark, how does, how does a venture capitalist uh, acquire a company and try to improve it? Well, the first thing is... Through debt, usually. You know, the, the, highly the, leveraged buyouts. The, the first thing is you have a company that is, is pretty, uh, pretty low respect on Wall Street. Its stock is low. Uh, it's typically mismanaged, it's not going anywhere, it's losing market share, it has the ability to do things, but the current management uh, is, is not up to the job of making this company perform the way it's going to, and the company is just drifting down. When it drifts down far enough, its stock price becomes attractive enough uh, for someone like Bain Capital to take it over uh, and see what they can do about streamlining it, about making it more efficient, about putting it back on the path to profitability. That's what Mitt Romney's career has been all about. He's got a stellar track record doing that. I think that everyone agrees that Bain Capital's record uh, at helping companies survive after they've driven themselves into the ground is the best of anybody in the business. Bain Capital's so, done well. Bain Capital's no, no, made a no, ton no. of money. But 22% of the companies Bain Capital helped went into bankruptcy. That's more than one in five. But, but, but typically it's about three and four. So, uh, you know, we're, Bain Capital's track record on this is twice as good as almost any other uh, company uh, that was in that business in terms of being able to help these companies uh, save jobs, return to profitability, streamline and become more efficient. It, it's really a stellar record. You, uh, you, well, you I'll, need I'll tell you this. When we come back, I want to read an article from the Wall Street Journal because the Wall Street Journal is nobody's liberal newspaper. That is certainly a respected uh, newspaper with a highly conservative editorial page. The Wall Street Journal says that Mitt Romney's record showed more bankruptcies than on average. And even the Wall Street Journal raised questions about whether or not these companies were looted too quickly. Excuse me, money was taken out too quickly. And in doing so, these companies went down the tube. So I'm going to show you that article. I'm going to show you that article when we come back. If you want to dial in and join the conversation, 888-488-MARK. Some dreams are universal. Dreams that inspire us. Multiple sclerosis is a devastating disease that changes lives forever. The National MS Society does more for people with MS than any organization in the world. But we can't do it alone. To get involved, visit us online at nationalmssociety.org or call 1-800-FIGHT-MS. This is why we're here. Because nobody dreams of having multiple sclerosis. What's wrong with this picture? Half of young Americans can't locate economic powers like Japan and India. 20% can't even find the Pacific Ocean. Without geography, our children aren't ready for the world. Geography is everywhere. It's incredible creatures. Rhythm. Fashion. Flavor. It's economics and politics. It's change. Understanding connections between people and places is critical in the 21st century. That's why we created MyWonderfulWorld.org. Go there now for your free parent and teacher action kits. 
and give our kids the power of global knowledge. Because kids who understand our world today can succeed in it tomorrow. Here again, the inside scoop with Mark Levine. I need a job. Necesito trabajo. I would like to. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. We're talking about Mitt Romney and what he did at Bank Capital. My guest is Republican strategist Mike Lane. Uh, Mike is defending Mitt Romney. I am attacking him. And if you want to join in and add your two cents, please do. We encourage you to call in. 888-488-MARK is the number. Toll free, 888-488-6275. Locally, the number is 571-749-1166. Okay, so we have an article now. This is from the Wall Street Journal. I couldn't find the exact one I wanted. I admit that. I'm going to try to find that in the next break. But this article says, uh, just describe some of the, we can show the article up on the screen. Can we please? Um, this article shows uh, some of the complaints of uh, the, the people that have uh, run against him. We have uh, Rick Perry, of course, called a vulture capitalism. Newt Gingrich said, rich people figuring out Uh, John Huntsman says, Governor Romney enjoys firing people. I enjoy creating jobs. Of course, Huntsman's now out of the race. And, and endorsed Romney. And has endorsed Romney. That's true. Well, maybe You say things in a campaign uh, that you always wish you didn't say. A day later. Amazing. <laughs> uh, maybe less than a week later. Interesting. This article says it's an old wa Wall Street quarrel and that there's a real disagreement among capitalists as to whether or not a, a private equity firm is a healthy parasite serving the national economic good or simply sucks wealth out from our economy to a privileged few. Even the Wall Street Journal, uh, no uh, socialist newspaper, no, the Wall social, Journal, no, no socialist rag, say both sides have a strong case. I, they write, it's true that private equity firms have bought companies, loaded them with debt, restructured or repackaged them with other companies, and ultimately sold them in the process. In some cases, jobs were created, debt was paid off, and companies emerged stronger than they were before. It also is true that private equity has an abysmal track record. Many companies are loaded with debt and downsized as the buyout shops collect management fees, and it gives examples of those. Mervyn's, Chrysler, Reader's Digest, MGM, and so forth. Um, one of the things it points out is that uh, this has been growing and growing and growing. It's bigger than it ever has been before. And of course, this is something that Romney's made a tremendous amount of money on. Now, there's another article. I swear it's there. I may have to find it for you in the next break that says that Romney was actually uh, having a higher bankruptcy rate than the average. But if you read the specifics about the companies, and again, we don't know all the companies. Bain won't mm -hmm. tell us. Let, let me start with the first question before we get to the specifics that I do have information on. Shouldn't Bain disclose all of Romney's record? He's running on what he did at Bain. Shouldn't they tell us? Okay, he worked on these 73 companies, and then here they are. Uh, you know, these are successful. These are failures. Because even the Wall Street Journal examined 77 of them, but it couldn't find all of them. Right, right. See, I don't think they do, because Bain is not running for anything. Their name is not on the ballot. They're a place where Mitt Romney used to work. They're a work. person. They're a corporation. Uh, they are a corporation, but they're not, they're, they're not on the ballot. They're not running for president. Uh, it's up to Mitt Romney to decide what he's going to disclose and what he's not going to disclose. Fine. I don't think the, uh, the Fine. American Shouldn't Romney disclose then? Romney is the co-founder of Bain. He's yes, the he one is. that, uh, frankly, he was the well, driving... Well, Bain Capital, not Bain, Bain Capital. Consulting. That's true. A Bain Capital. He was a driving force behind Bain Capital. He's the one who, who really got it going and, and was the main leader. I mean, he was the boss at mm -hmm. Bain Capital, let's face it. He's running for office saying, I did a great job as a businessman. In fact, he's trying to distance himself from his governorship of Massachusetts, if anything. He doesn't want to talk about that because he, he had espoused some progressive positions in those days. He's focused on Bain Capital. Shouldn't Mitt Romney disclose everything he did at Bank Capital, the good, the bad, and the ugly? Well, no, I don't think so. Uh, it's not relevant to uh, the job. If people, if people think that they don't have enough information on which to form a favorable judgment and support Governor Romney for president, then they don't have to vote for him. Okay. Uh, but, you heard but, it. But you heard there's it. No, uh, if you think that what he did at Bain is important and you think it's, it's wrong for him not to disclose it, don't vote for him. That's what uh, you're saying, we know, we, we know a great deal about what he's done. We will know a great deal more, but ultimately it's up to him and or enterprising investigative reporters to find this out. And at the end of the day, voters will make their own decision. I don't think that uh, 
uh, when you compare his record at Bain Capital with the president's record as, as president of the United States, you're going to take the guy who knows what he's doing in business and can get this economy straightened out rather than the president that has made our, our recession even worse than it was when he inherited it. Here's the difference. Everyone knows what Barack Obama has done or hasn't done, and you could try well, to Well, we don't know it. what he's done. All, all, uh, we, all you we, want. we talked earlier about his college transcripts that have been suppressed and, and, and not released. His law school transcripts, suppressed and not released. Where oh, my they? God, that's ridiculous. And, and I, I mean, that reminds me of Donald Trump. We have to find the long-form birth certificate because if we don't know the name of the doctor to deliver him as a baby, maybe he's a Kenyan well, socialist I, Muslim. That's a red herring. Uh, well, exactly, and this is a red yeah. herring, too. What Mitt Romney did to make a quarter of a billion dollars is absolutely relevant to this election. If he doesn't think it is, then you know what, Mitt Romney? Don't disclose your records. You will be crucified because it seems to me very clear that if you say you're going to run your country like you ran Bain and you won't tell us how you ran Bain, people aren't going well, to elect you to, to uh, be president I, I, of the United I, I States. Think, I think we know what he did and I think we can predict what he'll do to the country. The first thing he'll do is he'll start running like a business. We're not going to spend money we don't have. That's the first thing. The second thing is he's going to increase efficiency and streamline the government. That means the government is going to be smaller than it is today. Uh, you know, there's no secret about what he's going to bring to the presidency, and I think it's things that the people, that the American people want to see in the government. They want to see a downsized government. They want to see the deficit reduced. They want to see the economy recover. They want to see job growth, and these are the things that Mitt Romney will bring to the table. Here's the thing. When you run a corporation, when you run a private equity firm, your sole goal is to make as much money as you possibly can. You can destroy all the lives you want, you destroy their lives, as long as it means as you wring their necks, you get money from their blood. That's a success. That is success I, I in his think, world. I, I don't think that's the way he would describe a success. No. That's not the way he would describe it. But let's read what Reuters wrote, an, an investigative piece. This came out, by the way, just um, uh, January 6, 2012. So okay. it's, 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 it's fairly recent. Uh, this okay. is, for, Reuters for, is a respectable... For, first, let me point out for the record, Reuters is no Wall Street Journal. Reuters is, is far to the left Reuters of... Reuters is like the Associated thing. Press. It's a wired news and, service. And, and, it's their job to and, give... And a far leftist news service it is. It is. Come on. Reuters, there's nothing fair and even about them. Reuters is the one... Excuse me, was it just two years ago that they got nailed for... Uh, photoshopping these photos of the battle zone to make them look a lot worse than they were and putting them out there. That was Reuters, I believe. Uh, I'm sure that guy was fired, uh, uh, whoever did that. I don't let's, know. Let, Why did Reuters let, do it? Well, let's read this report because what this report shows, there's, Romney has not said anything in this report is untrue. Not a single person's campaign. And if he has, let me know because okay. I, I've read this in detail and I encourage people to read it too. It's called Special Report Romney Steel Skeleton in the Bain Closet. Uh, and this is about... A, a company called the, it was a Kansas City steel mill, basically, called GS Technologies. Mm -hmm. And they describe how uh, people, young men in business suits came in to the place and they would jump as the lava would burn and people were surprised that, you know, these young, and they would come in. In essence, what they did is it goes through the whole thing, is that this was a company that uh, it had, had a strike. The workers were promised that if they came back to work with signed contracts, they would get health insurance and severance pay because they were concerned that the company that Bain was taking so much money out that the company couldn't run. Steel is a very capital intensive thing. You can't mm -hmm. just, you need money to buy th th parts when they break down. What this article describes in enormous detail is how they uh, took a whole bunch of money out at the beginning, how they, they, uh, they didn't have spare parts, they didn't have, um, uh, they, they required, for example, one guy, he had a crane, and he'd been working there for 29 years, and they told him to pick up with the crane more weight than the crane could handle, 50% more than the crane could handle. And this guy knew that if he did that, the crane would topple over and it could lead to his death. So he said, I can't do that. The crane uh, doesn't let me do that. The manual said, don't do that. This could kill me. And they fired him. There's example after example. At the end of the day, Romney uh, and Bain get out two to three times what they put in, and the company goes bankrupt. And it goes, and the workers lose their jobs, and they lose, the, they don't even get the severance pay they were promised to get. The investors did very well, but the workers did, did not do well, the steel company did not do well. It's a very detailed story, and, and again, I encourage people to read it. Now, you may think that this is something that, oh, I don't know, private equity does, and, and it's just fine. But even uh, a guy by the name of Regelbrug, who was the, uh, the CEO at the beginning when Bain was there, but who got out as soon as he could because he saw what was going on, he said, and this is a quote from him, um, he said that his successor installed senior managers who did not know the business. He says, I have no question the company was survived under different management. Um, 
this to me is just an example after an example. I'll give you other examples. Well, but let, here's let, one. Let, me, let me say first, Mark, that, yeah. that Bain would not have acquired GS Technologies unless uh, it was a mismanaged uh, company. As I said, you can't. Bain got very rich out of this. Bain did very well. You can't acquire a company like this unless its stock is so depressed from mismanagement and inefficiency and lack of profits. Uh, that it's available. A company that's well managed, a company that is that is making a profit, uh, its stock price is high. People want that, and and it does not provide it does not provide an opportunity for a private equity firm to go in there and try and straighten it out. So 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 this this company was essentially in deep deep trouble when when Bain acquired it. Uh, sometimes sometimes well, really, you're they, able to they, turn they them were, around, they, and sometimes you're not. They were successful. They were profitable. They had been around since 1888. It says it needed some updating, and it's, and, it's and, demand and as you for point out, they, they had no money, and the, the updating they needed was so expensive because, as you point out, steel is a capital-intensive uh, process that they had no chance of doing it for themselves. They needed to get outside money. What happened in this case was the, uh, you know, they, Bain looted the company. I mean, they got tens of millions of dollars out of the company. It went bankrupt. Again, they did very well, but uh, the workers say that they, they had people there that had no experience in steel because they were cheap. I guess it's cheap to have managers that don't know what they're doing. And that basically there were a lot more accidents than there were before. People lost their health care. Uh, the thing I guess that bothers me is that here you have the workers who negotiate a good deal for themselves. They say, we don't trust you. We think you're going to get in and fire us all. So if you do, you have to pay us so much. And of course, they uh, looted the company, went into bankruptcy, and didn't pay them. And I, I do know this, as someone who's been in bankruptcy court, I don't know whether they went back to the bankruptcy court, but you can do something called a fraudulent transfer. And that's when you take so much money out of a company that you, you in essence, you, you're, you're forcibly causing them to, to break their contracts. And that's exactly what I think Bain did. I think Bain purposely grabbed as much money as they could out of there so that the workers would, be, would lose their pensions. And then you have people without health care. You have a, a woman, the article ends with a woman who dies because she can't afford health insurance because Mitt Romney and Bain looted her company. And these are stories that the American people are going to find out about. And, and that's, well, this one's a pretty powerful and, one. And, and, and we'll, we'll see more of uh, this, I'm sure. Look, Here's the thing, when, when you take over a company and it's mismanaged and you need to make it more efficient, you need to streamline it, uh, normally they're fat and bloated on personnel uh, and that has to be corrected. Uh, normally they have the wrong people in there. Now when you bring in efficiency experts, that's a double-edged sword, I will admit that. Uh, what they do is they know how to run a generic corporation, they know how to uh, make it more efficient, they know how to eliminate uh, fat, bloated, duplicative la layers of, of middle management and things like that. But what they don't know is often they don't know that particular industry. And in this case, you may have an example of people who didn't know steel as well as they should have, and they may have even made some bad moves. You know, efficiency experts are not monolithically perfect. The they do make mistakes. When Romney, if he became president of the United States, would he also hire people who don't know what they're doing for efficiency purposes? I don't know. We'll find out. 888-488-MARK. 888-488-6275. Right back. I this. need a job. Necesito trabajo. I would like to speak English better. Me gustaría hablar inglés mejor. I want to be a U.S. citizen. Quisiera ser ciudadano de los Estados Unidos. For over 35 years. Por más de 35 años. The Hispanic Committee of Virginia has been serving our community. El Comité Hispano de Virginia ha estado sirviendo a nuestra comunidad. Job training and placement. Capacitación. Ayuda para conseguir trabajo. Education for children and adults. Educación para niños y adultos. Immigration, naturalization, and medical referrals. Ayuda para los procesos de inmigración y naturalización y orientación sobre médicos are a small part of what we do. Son solo una pequeña parte de lo que hacemos. For help, information, or to volunteer. Para ayuda, información, o para ofrecerse como voluntario. Contact the Hispanic Committee of Virginia. Comuníquese con el Comité Hispano de Virginia. Helping everyone participate more fully in American society. Ayudando a todos a participar plenamente en la sociedad norteamericana.
Would you notice if you were missing half your kidney function? According to the National Kidney Foundation, 20 million people have chronic kidney disease and 20 million more may be at risk and not even know it. Anyone with high blood pressure, diabetes, or family history of chronic kidney disease is at risk. Early diagnosis is vitally important. To get the whole story, talk to your doctor and visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org or call for a free brochure. Because when it comes to chronic kidney disease, you might not know. Here again, the Inside Scoop with Mark Levine. Back to the Inside Scoop. I am your host, Mark Levine. My guest today is Mike Lane. He's Republican strategist. We're discussing Mitt Romney, the uh, leader in the Republican nomination for president. I think Though, we can go so far as to call him the likely nominee. Mike, two states have voted, representing 0.3% of the American population. I, understand. I would hope you would agree with me that Iowa and New Hampshire shouldn't solely determine the, the nominee for president of the United States. Mark, I absolutely agree with you. It's reprehensible that it works that way, but unfortunately it does. Well, uh, I agree with you need, that it's, it's most we, likely. We, we, we need to get Iowa and New Hampshire out from the front of the bus. By the That's way, just not you and I both right. agree on that. I, I, I even understand the need to sometimes have small states go first. It's easier to get around small states. Right. But why Iowa, not South Dakota, give Nebraska a chance instead of New Hampshire? Maybe Vermont would like a turn instead of South Carolina. Why not Arkansas or Kentucky? Will you invite me back to do an entire show on my plan for electoral I reform I and, and do because that? I, we may I actually find some the, agreement. There. Oh, I think, I think you'd agree I mean, with 100% I mean, well, because 80% I, it, of what it I It say. seems to me that every American should have a chance to be first in line. Like I said, I'm actually okay with small states going first, so California mm -hmm. may never get to go first. Uh, but it could be the, the first big state. Florida's the first big state, fourth. Maybe California should go fourth once every 30 years if, or so. Well, if you did that, it would be all over after California. Uh, that, that's see, probably true. You know, you, you want to you wanna keep the process open. And I agree the small states going first is the right way. Uh, but, and I like that they're plan, all across the country, but, the Midwest plan, and the my, Northeast. My, my plan calls for multiple states, uh, small states to go, and therefore... Uh, presumably a number of different candidates can claim victory in different areas we, depending we may, on what we may their agree geographical on that. thing and, is. And the know. one thing I do like, of course, is that Iowa's in the Midwest, uh, you know, uh, New Hampshire's in the Northeast, South Carolina's in the South. It used to be Nevada was fourth out West. You know, another Florida reason. Florida jumped the gun. And, 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 and <laughs> but that reason, seems to be the, the fair way to do it, to and, have each area of the country. And, and another reason why we've had 40 years or 50 years of reprehensible, just ludicrous ethanol policy in this country is true. because Iowa goes first. That's true. And if we could stop that. That's true. Although, if South Dakota or, or Nebraska went first, we might have the same problem. Well, but, but we that's, uh, mix it up. <laughs> mix it up. I'll teach you how on another show. All right, no, no, we'll talk about that. That's fair. But where we disagree, I, I want to finish this article from Reuters because uh, we were talked about the fact that, uh, that the wrong supervisors were hired by Bain, by Romney's company. Uh, according to the uh, CEO at the time, a guy by the name of Regelbrug, um, in fact, an industry competitor offered a whole lot of money, quote unquote, to buy GS Steel, but Bain turned it down. Uh, it was apparently Mittal Steel Company. Um, and uh, here's the thing, as GS Industries sought to cut costs, this is from the Reuters article, it hired line managers with no experience in the steel industry. One had worked at Walmart, many came out of the military. Uh, one formal steel worker said that uh, of a, a retired Air Force colonel, a supervisor, Quote, he would come up with one of the, some of the stupidest damn ideas that you've ever seen, unquote. There was a lot of paperwork. A manager skimped on everything from earplugs to spare motors. They scaled back routine maintenance, causing machines to break down more often. Parts were no longer available. Uh, they just things, and I gave you the example of the guy that didn't want the crane to topple over. Uh, they simply didn't run the business very well, and the company went to the ground. It went from uh, uh, losing... Uh, it lost $16 million in 1997. It lost $52 million in 1999. So it lost three times the money it lost two years earlier. And I should note, 1999 was a really good year. Bill Clinton was president. The economy was strong. The yeah, but, stock market was at its peak. But, but the American steel industry was not doing well. Even though the economy was doing great, the American steel industry was flat on its back and sinking. Operating income dropped from, from 40, close to $40 million to less than $10 million. Uh, so this is one company. Right. And, and the Wall, and the Wall Street you know, Journal, again, you, I, know, I know you're not going to complain about the Wall Street Journal. It, 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 no, it, it's a it, fair it, paper. It's a, it's a conservative newspaper. Uh, but the, the Wall Street Journal, in an article, January 9th, so a recent article, 
called Romney at Bain, Big Gains, Some Busts, mm -hmm. uh, goes through, and it, it does a record of 77 businesses that Bain invested in while mm -hmm. Romney was there. So this isn't Reuters looking at one company. I was going to talk about a New York Times article that looked at a medical equipment plant, Dade. We'll get to that in a minute. But those are, those are case studies of two particular companies. Uh, the Wall Street Journal looked at 77 businesses. Now they will tell you, deep in the article, they say here, that they couldn't look at all of the ones because Bain won't tell them. These are all 77 they could find. Uh, they could not find all of them. It, it, it very clearly says down here somewhere that Bain no, won't, I'll stipulate won't, to the fact that they said everything. that they can't do it. They won't tell them everything. So they found 77. 22%, the figure I said, either filed for bankruptcy reorganization or closed their doors uh, by the end of the eighth year after Bain invested. An additional 8% ran into so much trouble all the money Bain invested was lost. So that's, that's 30% um, that, that failed. It goes on to say that um, it gives examples of taking a lot out of the company. It, it makes clear that Bain made money on these, even the ones that went bankrupt. Ba ba Bain's not a nonprofit corporation. You Bain, know, they're Bain, they're Bain, in business to make money. Bain made money. By the end of the day, we found that um, uh, the companies often did not do very well. Now, Romney describes these job losses and bankruptcies as the inevitable product of the capitalist system. And uh, there are winners and losers in the capitalist system. Yes. That's the way it works. I understand. But it seems to me that when a company's doing fine and it's, it's doing well and the workers are there and it's making a product uh, like this Dade, this medical equipment product, that when a, a, a corporation comes in like a private equity firm mm -hmm. and first of all, it's highly leveraged to begin with. Right, I mean, they don't. They, Bain doesn't buy this with its own money. It uses maybe ten no, percent. Ten percent, it, its it, own money. It depends Ninety percent. It depends on the negotiated terms and conditions of the sale. The vast majority of these were highly leveraged buyouts, where they would get, uh, they would get investors on Wall Street. They would get banks. They would, they would bring in. They maybe give ten percent, and then right. have ninety percent come in, and then they have this that, massive that, debt. That, that's a typical industry model. It is, is that, a typical is, industry is, is model. that you have you know, right. investors that go on this thing. And so what happens is you, you, have you a, want to have a diversified portfolio. Even Bain wants to have a diversified portfolio. They don't want to put all their marbles in two or three or four acquisitions. That's not the way the world works. But what happens is you have a company, many of these companies had, had virtually no debt, and then it's settled with tons of debt. And then the debt owners get in front of the workers who've worked there sometimes 20, 30, 40 years, who have solid contracts. The debt owners then get their money out first and leave the company with virtually nothing. Mm -hmm. and that's what happened time and time again. Here's, here's what I said that uh, I told you I'd find a Wall Street Journal article that said that uh, he did it, he had more bankruptcies than, uh, than others. Uh, here's, here's what I've got. Uh, Mr. Marin, they quoted Mr. Marin, a researcher at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, who said the rate at which Bain's target companies ran into trouble seems large. Uh, I think that's a little inconclusive. You know, uh, one, Mark, one guy who we don't know what his qualifications are or what his information was, you know, says that. It, it's not. Uh, I think there's, there's more in here. But I have to, I have to read it all. Uh, but it, it goes on. It talks about DDI. It talks about KB Toys. It talks about a whole host. And, the, and, and I, notice, also, I notice you're not bringing up. It talks about Staples in there too, which well, okay, is let's talk about know, Staples. Staples. Staples is a you know a poster child success story for Bain Capital. Staples is the biggest success of it's Bain Capital. It's the poster Capital. child. And what you find if you look at Staples is that Bain did it. It didn't do that well. Then it was bought out by Kmart, and then it did very well. So if you look at Staples right. growth, you see it went slightly up from Bain. Then apparently right. Kmart. But but when but well. when this guy had this idea about I think I can I think I can save money for small businesses if I can get them to come to the store and buy their office supplies instead of having it delivered to them, I think I can save them money. And he went to Bain and said, Can you put me in business? And they did. And then after it launched, yes, ultimately they spun it off and somebody else made it into the mega thing that it is. But if it wasn't for Bain in the beginning, Staples would not exist. Well, or so, some other company would exist. So, we have Office Depot. Some, some, we, other, we, we have, some, we have, some uh, other venture capital firm, right? They're all started with venture I capital. I am not against venture capital firms. I'm not. I think I, they, they often perform a good function. My problem is with the ones that go in there with no thought for making the business a growing concern, but how to get as much money out of it as possible. And that's my problem with the system. You can have venture capitalists who are trying to make a business succeed, and you can have venture capitalists who are trying to loot the firm, grab as much money out of it as possible, let the chips fall where they may, and as long as the venture capitalists are richer, they're happier. And I would suggest you Romney is more of that kind. He's I, a vulture capitalist, not a venture I, capitalist. I don't think the evidence supports that. You know, you'll, you'll find a case study with two or three things that makes it look like that, but again, 
we need to take it in the in the record uh, in the light of the entire record uh, while he was there. But we don't know and the entire record. They won't give us the entire record. We, we, it seems to we me that we know a lot about the record, and we know from we know from the record that we know about that the record was quite good. Here's that, he, the thing. that they were they had a higher percentage of bets that paid off, i.e., the companies restructured, streamlined, efficiency experts. Seventy percent. And, and and they and they went forward. It's better than the industry average. So, we no, it's know not. That. It's not better than the industry average. Well, Again, this guy, the Federal Reserve Bank, cited by the yeah, Wall Street Journal, who says is, it's worse than the industry who, who is some guy at the Federal Reserve Bank? He's a researcher. What information was he dealing with? You know, who says Mark, it's better than the industry average? I, I Where, where's we that need, quote from, Mike? It's, I, it's widely reported on that. I if haven't you, seen uh, that. Uh, but you, you're welcome to check and get back to me or, or post it on my website. I'll post I, it on I'd your like website. to see that. I'll I, post it on your website. I, I haven't seen that. All right, so here we have... In Perhaps one of our readers has seen it, and they can call in. That would be great. Please do. Just call in 888 mark 888-488-6275. So here's what happened with Dade. Dade was a little known maker of research of medical technology based in Illinois, uh, and it had problems, no question about it. Uh, and uh, Bain said they would turn it around, and Bain did to Dade exactly what Bain did to GS Technologies. They would come in and they would uh, grab a bunch of money out of it, uh, Dade employees uh, found that it, it, it had the wrong workers, the wrong supervisors. The company um, goes in and says that uh, it, it sells roll. It sales actually increased, um, it doubled. But at the same time, its liabilities, its debt, the stuff that Bain forced on it, that zoomed. That went up uh, more than almost three times, from uh, less than 300 million to more than 800 million. There was cost company in the company. Uh, they, they started to take their workers, their engineers, take their pension plans and, and slash them, mistreat them, and uh, soon when you don't have good workers, the company fails, it goes into bankruptcy. I would argue that this is a pattern that frankly we may expect if Romney becomes president of the United States. Because this is a guy who believes that if you mistreat workers, if you fundamentally mistreat workers, take away their pensions, in the, that's in the business world, in, the, in, in our world it would be Social Security and Medicare, but if you mistreat workers bad enough, then extremely rich people will make a lot of money. That's his pattern. It's true. He did make a lot of money. Okay. But that's not the kind of guy who want to be president of the United Look, States. Right, the first thing is our viewers should know that this current example is coming from the New York Times. Hard, hardly a credible news source, the New York Times. Hard, it's, hard, hardly a credible news source. It happens to be the most the credible Times. newspaper in the United it, States. It is so left-wing biased. If, if that reporter didn't go out there with the intent of finding something to hammer Mitt Romney on for purposes of just destroying his campaign, I don't know why it would appear in the New York Times. They're simply not a credible news source. Now, I will stipulate that you can find two which you found. Where there's two, there's four. Where there's four, there's eight, and you'll probably find 15, and, and maybe more 20, than that. According to the you Wall Street will, Journal, 22% okay. went you, bankrupt. You will find examples of things where it didn't go right and where most of us probably would have said, you know, we wouldn't have done that that way, we would do this way. But let's look at the overall success rate. If 22% went bankrupt, that means 70, uh, what, 8% well, succeeded? Well, an another 8% they Set, lost their money. Right. So 70% right. succeeded. 70% succeeded. That's a very, very high success rate for the private equity firm I such as Bain Capital. I don't think it is particularly when you find that it's they're loading it with debt and it's the debt itself that makes the company fail. If you want to join this discussion, you have one last chance to do so. Give us a call, 888-488-MARK, 888-488-6275. You can dial locally, 571-749-1166. We'll be right back. wash your car at home. When I wash my car, everything runs down the street and down into the storm drains. With all the chemicals and the soaps and waxes, the last thing I want to do is poison my own drinking water. At least here, it's all contained and recycled on site. That's why I also take my car in for oil changes instead of doing it myself. I might take a chance on spilling stuff. You know what the best part is? What? More time to kick back and watch the game. How far would you go? To protect the planet. I want you to build an ark. Here we go. Okay, that's good. Oh, okay. Ow. Oh. Oh. Maybe there's another way. People, the flood 
is imminent. Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Somewhere around the world, there are men and women of the armed forces risking their lives, helping rebuild communities after natural disasters, collecting toys for needy children, tutoring kids in school. These are your sons and daughters who work to keep us safe, secure, and free. Dedicated men and women who put their country first. Here again, The Inside Scoop with Mark Levine. Welcome back to The Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. This is our last segment, so it's your last chance to call in if you want to join in the discussion. Just pick up the phone and dial toll-free, 888-488-MARK, 888-488-6275, or locally, 571-749-1166. My guest is Republican strategist Mike Lane. He and I don't agree on much, except for the fact that these issues need to be discussed and that it's very good that uh, we discuss them. So let me discuss something else about Mitt Romney. Not what he did at Bain Capital, but um, where he's keeping his money. Because I found an article that I don't think has gotten much discussion, but I guarantee you it will before November. This is a December 2007 article from the Los Angeles Times. So it dates back to his last campaign. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the tax havens that Mitt Romney has found in Bermuda and the Cayman Islands. Uh, he's got shell companies. When I say shell companies, I mean shell companies. This article shows that uh, there, there, there's no offices in Bermuda, the Cayman Islands. They're post office boxes, uh, and th that's about it. And where he's got at least a million dollars owned by a trust, it's called San Caddy Limited, where he is the sole shareholder and the sole director. So this isn't even a Bain thing, this is a Romney thing. A and uh, the uh, guy who worked with Romney for nine years at Bank Capital says uh, you never have to go to Bermuda. There's no one doing any work down there other than some lawyers. It's just a mail drop, said uh, Mark uh, Walpole. Um, uh, Kevin Madden, Romney's campaign spokesman, said there's nothing improper about it and says it didn't help him avoid taxes. Well, we don't know because he won't share his tax returns with us. It seems to me that the President of the United States shouldn't be hiding money in Bermuda and the Cayman Islands. Look, these are notorious tax dodges. They are designed to avoid paying taxes. Mitt Romney won't disclose his tax returns. He won't disclose the details of what he's got in Bermuda and the Cayman Islands. This is a guy who's not even paying the rates that you and I pay, right? He pays 15% as a hedge fund guy. He pays half the rate of many Americans pay on their taxes. And now he's hiding it in Bermuda and Cayman Islands. I don't know what's happened since 2007. This article is, is since then. But at the very least, I hope you'll agree with me, he needs to disclose right. everything he did down there. Well, for, first of all, um, all right, let, let's, let's go right to that. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, Mitt Romney's uh, investments, uh, everything, have been in a blind trust since 2003. He does not know where they are, what they are, what they hold. He uh, stopped they, this. They, they've been in a blind trust since 2003. He could stop this. Uh, why would he? Why would uh, he? Right. Because the President of the United States should not be putting money in offshore tax dodges. It may be legal. In fact, I suspect it is legal. I, I have no reason to doubt that he's, to, to think he's broken the law. Maybe he has, maybe he hasn't, but I certainly have no reason to suggest he's broken the law. But just because you can legally avoid paying U.S. taxes by putting your money in Bermuda or, or the Cayman Islands doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And for the President of the United States, I would argue it's unpatriotic to deny the, the, the federal government the taxes they need to run things because you're busy funneling your, your money to offshore okay. bank accounts. As, as long as you bring that up, let, let, me, let me bring up two points. I was going to hold this off to later, but as long as you call it unpatriotic, I, I, need, think to, it is. I need to respond to that. Uh, Not illegal, the, unpatriotic. Uh, all right. But first of all, as I said, it's a blind trust. He doesn't know where it is. He doesn't know what is in it. He doesn't know what the uh, investments are. That's the whole nature of a blind trust. His and, spokesman it's, and, it's been it. a, and it's been a blind trust since 2003. So, so we don't know. Uh, and he doesn't know. Secondly, he has to fill out a, uh, a, a uh, disclosure form on his net worth and his investments and things like that, which he did to the best of his ability. PolitiFact has looked at it and said there's no evidence that there is, you know, an excessive amount of overseas investments. You know, there were no, certainly no foreign banks disclosed or anything like that. So to the best of his knowledge, it, it, you know, he doesn't know that it's there or not there. But finally, let me, let me uh, bring this up, Mark. You know, you, uh, you went to law school and presumably 
uh, you studied about a judge uh, named uh, uh, Leonard um, Hand. Yes. Uh, judge yes. Leonard Hand, who is uh, a, uh, an appellate judge, or was an appellate judge, in the Second Circuit uh, up in New York. About 100 years ago. Uh, then about uh, 70. Or, okay. Uh, he, he'd actually, he died in the 60s. Okay. Uh, and he is, he is, to this day, the most quoted judge uh, on uh, on tax matters, the Supreme Court quotes I even him all know the what, time. I even know what quote you're going to give me. Well, but you all can right. Read it well, I'll, I'll read it for it, our, it, It's for the our one our that listeners. says you have no obligation to pay any more taxes. It than, goes. It goes further than that. I know the quote. Judge Judge Hand said, uh, "Anyone quote anyone may arrange his affairs so that his taxes shall be as low as possible. He is not bound to choose that pattern which best pays the treasury." There is not even a patriotic duty to increase one's taxes. Over and over again, the courts have said that there is nothing sinister and in so arranging affairs as to keep taxes as low as possible. Everyone does it, said Judge Hand. The rich, the poor alike, all do it right, for nobody owes any public duty to pay more than the law demands. I will agree with you. That well, Romney, agree with Judge Hand. I will agree with you that uh, the average American citizen owes no public duty to pay any more taxes than the tax law requires. I do not think the President of the United States should be held to the same standards as an average American. I told you, I don't think Romney broke the law. I mean, I have no reason to believe it. Maybe he did. I mean, we don't know. He's not disclosing things. It's in a blind but, trust. But, he doesn't but I have know. No things. Well, he doesn't one thing know. you should know for this article tells us, it's right here if you look at the article, it says that he bought this before it went in the blind trust. He purchased a 3.25% share mm -hmm. in late 2001. So he's putting his money in the Cayman Islands before he put everything in the blind and, trust. And the Caymans are a great place. I love them. So I, uh, the I Cayman know. Islands are, are not, they, they are known to be a tax dodge. And apparently this is more than a million dollars in there. Mark, there's, there's a difference between tax avoidance, which everyone should practice, and tax uh, evasion. Evasion. Which is a crime. Wh which is a crime. Again, I'm not accusing tax, Mitt Romney tax of committing avoidance a crime. is something everyone should aspire to. I'm not accusing to. Mitt Romney of committing a crime. But it seems to me that at a time when we have a massive deficit, at a time when Republicans are complaining about the fact that we, we don't have enough money for our schools or our teachers or our firefighters or Social Security or Medicare, they want to cut everyone, that a, an extremely wealthy person using tax loopholes to avoid paying what I think is a fair rate to, to the United States government. Remember, this guy isn't even paying what his secretary pays. He's not paying 25%, 30%. He's only paying 15% because he's a hedge fund manager, and we all know that's the rich guy's exception to the tax rule. I'm and then to, he takes the 15%, you know and then he puts it in the Cayman Islands. He doesn't bring it home to the United States, and then that way he avoids taxes in that way. It's all legal, and it all stinks. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go with you that we need to change the laws. If your job is investing, then that shouldn't have the same tax advantages as other types of investments. And I'll, I'll go along with you on that. We can argue another time as to what that But Mitt Romney has, prof has, but, has profited tremendously well, from this I mean, the, the rules are there. And, the rules are there. You know, He's not calling you to change these rules. I haven't heard Mitt Romney say that hedge fund managers should pay the same tax rate as anybody else. Well, he may, maybe he, you need to talk to him he, about he that. He may right? not believe it. I believe it, but you know, no, I'm glad you do. Mid, That's mid, very reasonable of you. Governor, I appreciate Gavin, that. Governor Romney doesn't consult with me every time he uh, gives a speech. Well, you know? well he he has, so here's a guy he's paying about half the rate of what uh, other millionaires pay, much less multi-hundred millionaires, which, mm -hmm. which is what he is. Uh, and not only does he pay about half what they pay, less than half of what they pay, but then he sticks it all in the Cayman Islands, so he has to pay even less. That's no, disgusting. Ulti ultimately, that's that, something that's that's no. something that, that uh, no. should be Il it's it's legal, but it should be illegal. And even though it's legal, I think it's gross. I think that to say that I want a president of the United States, I want to help this country succeed, but me, I'm investing in the Cayman Islands, tells you this is a guy who doesn't have too much faith in America. Mark, what Judge Hand said was, and, and let, I, me, I heard let, let, let me let me reread the one part. <laughs> right. There is not even a patriotic duty to increase one's taxes. Is it fair to hold a nominee for President of the United States to a higher standard than your ordinary American? I, I would think less of somebody who paid more in taxes than they were required to. I would, I would find that to be a disqualifying uh, feature of their candidacy. Let me ask you this. It is perfectly legal, perfectly legal, to take a uh, a South Carolina factory, close it down, fire all its workers, and hire a bunch of 12-year-olds in China and India to do the job at 12 cents a day, 
it, do the same job, transport it back, and sell it to the American people. That's perfectly legal under U.S. law. Do you have a problem with it? Or you say, you know what, it's legal, you make more money, it's a good thing to do. You know, you know what, Mark, here's the thing. If that factory in South Carolina that does produce jobs and does produce products, if it's run efficiently and it can compete in the world economy and it can make a profit, then I don't think anyone would shut it down. Well, I let's, think it's let's, gonna do fine. let's stipulate that if you pay a worker, oh, I don't know, 40,000 a year, uh, not, a, not a big salary, but enough to survive on mm -hmm. with a pension that he can't compete with a kid who can make a dollar a day in India or China and lives on starvation wages. So let's, uh, we can't compete. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm willing to say that. In China and India, we, uh, we, we cannot we, compete with people who are willing to work 14-hour days at age 13 for a dollar a day. Now, let's face it, living costs are a lot cheaper in China and in India. But if that is our standard, then the right capitalist thing to do is to shut down all American manufacturing. Mark, Mark, we can compete. And a lot of industries and a lot of manufacturers in America do compete. And they compete very favorably. And they're profitable. And, and, and they create jobs. And they give people decent wages and things like that. You know, you, you have to look at the individual circumstance surrounding that company. If you've got a company in South Carolina or anywhere, I don't care where it is, that is mismanaged, uh, that has- You say it's mismanagement. That, well, if, if you go to Mexico, it's not just China and India, I don't mean to no, pick no. on them. Is it, if you go it, to Mexico or any other third world country where labor rates are one-tenth of what they are here, and you make your product more cheaply that way, you would argue it's bad management to hire American. You would argue that we should fire no, more Americans no, just so the venture capitalist no, makes a ton of money. Um, Americans have to be innovative. Americans have to. I mean, there are advantages to being here. First of all, you save the whole transportation import thing. That's you true. Know? I mean, that, that's a huge advantage for that, a domestic corporation. That's true. And they, and they need to be smart about taking advantage of that. But you don't see any particular moral good at hiring an American versus hiring a foreigner to, to work for an American corporation and make American goods. Sure. If we can make a profit in America, if the corporation can be run, it can make a product that people want, they're willing to pay for it, and we can create jobs here, I think that's absolutely wonderful. Do you agree with me that we should make illegal the stuff that Mitt Romney and his trust, he did and then his trust is continuing to do, parking your money offshore to avoid paying taxes, that should be illegal. If you got a billion dollars invested in the United States and you move it to the Cayman Islands, you still should take the capital gains and profits and all of that and pay taxes on them. You know, I don't know exactly the rules and regulations under which what you just alleged. We don't even know if it's true because we don't even know if there's Because he won't money. disclose the details of it. We don't know it. if there's anything in the Cayman Islands. He can't we do, disclose we do the know. details, we know, Mark. We know, he no, we know there's a trust. Know. He, no, he doesn't know. It's all in a blind trust. It's run by a trustee or the, his designee. The blind trust has admitted it. This is not something that, that uh, Mitt Romney, he told it to the LA Times. I'm sure it's true. The, 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 the trustee for the blind trust told that? The trustee for the blind trust says that he's got uh, there's 32 Bain and Sankati equity and hedge funds in, um, in this, uh, this Cayman Islands here. All right. Well, then the trustee should be dealing with that, but not Governor Romney, because he has no idea Romney where those things are. Romney should instruct his and trustee it, it, it violates, to bring the money home. It violates the terms of the blind trust when you start asking the trustee, where is it, what's it doing? Because I don't then, think so. Yeah, because, Mark, look, the whole point is so that the president can't advantage and disadvantage his own investments. Our, our That's what up. a blind trust but, you is. Know, people argue the super PAC was severed from the candidates, but when Gingrich told the super PAC to take their ad down, they took their ad down. Ben could get this money, he could, uh, Romney could get this money home, and he should, and this will be a lot more on this, I trust you, very much. Mike Lane, thanks for coming on the Inside Scoop. Always a pleasure, Mark, thank you. Uh, if you want to find out more, go to MarkLevineTV.com.